Today in the Indie Game Cafe, we are taste testing a demo for Crime O'Clock, a detective puzzle game where you find objects and people in sprawling cities based loosely on specific periods of time. There are aspects of this demo I enjoyed, although, and you'll see it in my playthrough, there were a few questions I had about the pacing and story by the end of it. All in all though, if you want a game where you get to enjoy a very detailed hidden object search or classic words Waldo mechanics with a bit of detective work thrown in, this could be up your alley. A final note, while this was recorded before the full release was out, uh, if you enjoy this playthrough and want to pick it up, Crime O'Clock is out now for you to play on Steam. Yeah, would you look at the time? It's time to bust crime. No, I don't know. I, I'm just excited. This seems to be a game where you solve mysteries, um, and it looks really stylish and cool. I mean, look at this UI already. If I'm remembering correctly, the developers are Bad Seed, and I think I saw the trailer for this on Day of the Devs during the Summer Game Fest activities, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked to give it a try because I love a good mystery. I love solving puzzles, uh, and yeah, let's, let's hop in and do it together. Hello, detective. I'm Eve, your new AI crime-solving partner. I'm able to see past and future events by accessing the time flow, our virtual recreation of the true timeline. Past is cool. Future, uh, uh, I'm looking at the future reminds me of, what is it, the thought crimes in many a sci-fi show. That makes me a little apprehensive, not gonna lie. You get to focus on the not-so-simple mathematics of crimes. You'll find the clues, chase the leads, all of that trap dramatic detective stuff. You see, there are people with the ability to alter the time flow with motives that are, let's say, questionable. When that happens, we might detect a crime that was never supposed to happen. Our task is to find those anomalies and restore correct the correct course of history. But I have so many questions! Who are we to know what the correct course of history- I mean... Uh, okay, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe this is where the game will investigate even further. In, a, in doing this work, perhaps we'll dig a little deeper. Between you and me, I know you're new to this. I am too, so we're in the same boat. Let's be sure we do a good job. Okay, all right, let's see. So we are, ooh, information age. In order for you to learn the basics, we'll begin with a simulation. Press play when you're ready. All right, let's hop into the timeline. The apartment in pink. Let's review the fundamentals so we can prepare you for your final test. It's time, your final test? I thought this was the beginning. <laughs> it's time to show me your skills of deduction, detective. I've recreated a short criminal case inspired by a true story archived in my database. Don't worry though, I'll follow you step by step. Okay. Oh. Here's our case. A mysterious thief broke into a fashion model's loft and stole, stole one of her famous jewels. There's a catch, though. According to the true timeline, the crime hasn't, hap crime hasn't happened. So our task is to preserve the integrity of the time flow. To do that, we have to learn exactly what happened and find the right order of events. We can't interfere with the past, so we have to be sure our actions don't create further paradoxes. Okay. The first step in any investigation is to find a crime scene. Zoom in to get a look at the map and observe details. All right. Oh, what's this? The best way to find a clue is to zoom in. Now we have to select an element and let the system verify it. If it's actually a clue, it'll be highlighted. To select, press and hold until the system answers. Right now though, we need to find the victim, our fashion model. Can you find her? I mean, this this looks like her right here. Ooh, okay. Great job, here's our model. As you can see, she's reporting the theft to a police officer. If we look closely, we can usually find more clues. She's pointing somewhere, probably towards her apartment. Let's see if we can find it, okay. Remember to observe things carefully. Try to follow an imaginary line. Okay, got it. There's one last thing, detective, only for this case to help you focus on the right area, I'm highlighting the zone where the case takes place. Okay, so we know we don't have to look at the rest of the map, essentially, which is a big map. So let's see, aha, uh -huh. I see, I see, we've got broken into door, burgled. <laughs> there it is. Everything has been turned upside down, inside out, and the door is broken. Unfortunately, the thief is gone. 
It will be almost impossible to locate a thief if we know nothing about them, especially amid a crowd. Amidst a crowd? Uh, thankfully, my main frame lets us examine the case from different points in time. These points are called ticks, and they're frozen, fixed moments in time. It's not ideal, but a collection of ticks is our only way to experience the past. Let's go back one tick and look for information. Okay. So one tick ago, it was not burgled. As you can see, the whole map has changed. Moving back and forth in time, it's possible to observe the moments and actions of the inhabitants. For example, the model's apartment is still intact. The thief hasn't entered it yet. Let's take a look. The thief is bound to be nearby. Okay, so what's interesting is we still have these moments right here um, that we've captured and highlighted. And it looks like there's a cat burglar over here. Suspect. Maybe I was a bit too didac di didactic in creating this simulation, but you have to admit our suspect has everything. A dark jumpsuit, a balaclava, and a crowbar. He definitely isn't a heating technician. Let's move forward and see if he's really our thief. Remember, we have to be 110% sure of our theories before we take any action to restore the timeline. Okay, so we're fast forwarding to tick five. This tick was recorded right after the jewel was stolen. See if our not a heating technician is close by. Sometimes characters change their clothes or appearance between ticks, especially if they're about to do something suspicious. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Okie dokie, so we're looking around. Uh huh. We've got someone running with a bag tucked into their jumpsuit. They've got the mask in their hand. This looks pretty suspicious to me. Found him! He's leaving the crime scene and he's taken off his balaclava. Clever. Clever for not him. Uh, not very clever, honestly. Keep following our definitely not a heating technician. Okay. You can interact with me at any time. If there's a light bulb icon, I have a hint for you. That's nice. I love a good hint. Oh, okay. You want me to ha- okay. Hints. Let's keep following the suspect. Ooh, and there's a timer here. Okay. Well, I don't want to use that hint quite yet. Where is he going? Where did he come from? Where did he go? He's walking toward the water course, but what for? Oh, I don't know. Maybe an escape. <laughs> Detective, we need to continue the hunt for our suspect. Often the solution to an investigation involves chases and surveillance duties. Okie dokie. So we've got, uh-huh. Oh, he's just proposing. You know what? That model doesn't need. Doesn't need that fancy ring. <laughs> he, has, he has good intentions. <laughs> He's holding the loot, the stolen tool, and giving it to a giant rat. Maybe the detail was a this detail was a bit different in the original story, but that doesn't matter. AI has the right to creative wait. This this is I know this is a training simulation, but it's weird to me that the AI can manipulate the story in the training situation, because what if this is gonna happen in our actual investigations? I'm just I still surveillance future crimes, I don't know. I really, really hope that this game dives into that because to make a game in this day and age about using AI to surveil people and crimes is like, you can't not talk about it, right? Right? Let me know what you think. Okay, now that we've caught him red-handed, we can be sure that he's a culprit, send a report back in time to the local police and have him arrested. To them, it will appear like a message on one of their terminals. They won't have a clue about our involvement. We couldn't prevent the crime, but we've restored the correct course of history. Just remember this, we aren't basic police officers. Our job is not to prevent crimes and save the innocent. <laughs> That's not what basic police officers do anyway. Instead, our task is to protect the true timeline. Let it be known, police are always reactive. They do not proactively protect people, just FYI. Great job, detective. Now you're for the final test. Now you're ready for the final test. Detective, congratulations. You are now a fully fledged operative agent. I suggest you relax a little bit. Disturbances in the true timeline are extremely re 
Alert! New Nexus event detective. Detective, I'm afraid you're relaxing is over. <laughs> so soon? A new Nexus event is corrupting the true timeline. What is a Nexus event? Alas, there is no time to explain. It's bad. Really bad. Imagine life as you know it stopping instantaneously and an entire age of your history collapses. We have to act swiftly. Let's go. All right, 2015, the information age. I was alive in 2015. The red blood-stained band. Ooh, what? Pay attention because now we mean business. This is a real case, not a simulation. My quantum scanners have picked up a very strange signal and records of crimes that were never supposed to happen are now forming within my database. We have to act. Oh, that's a good question, detective. Why crimes, you ask? Well, altering the course of history through violence and deception is by far the easiest way because time tends to correct itself when it's given a chance. However, it's pretty hard to fix when your key actor is out of the picture or worse. Well, enough with explanations, let's go. Based on my readings, I can say we have a murder. <laughs> the victim should be somewhere on the castle grounds. There's been a murder. Okay, somewhere on the castle grounds, the victim. We are looking for someone. Oh, there's a nice little booty cheek over there. But no, that's not what we need. Things are happening. <gasps> oh my goodness, someone's been crushed by a robot? Ouch. Axel Blood. There's the victim beneath the fallen spotlight. Axel Blood was next to the fallen spotlight. He shouldn't have died on this day. Also, the pizza incident, their next album, would be a worldwide success. There's some absolute bangers on it. So let's get back to work saving Axel. Have you noticed, Detective? I've installed the language pack that lets me street speak as a true denizen of the information age. It'll be fun. Back to our investigation. Someone or something must have cut the cord and caused the spotlight to fail and fall. But what? See if you can find a misplaced sharp object. Okay. Sharp object, A. Eh? Misplaced, huh? I mean, I see some arrows over here, some fries, but I don't think that has to do with it. Looks like we've got another crime going on here, but we're not stopping that one. I mean, here's an angry looking guy walking away. Clothes discarded. What are you? No? That seems pretty suspicious to me. Um... I mean, can I mark these as sharp objects? No. Okay, find a sharp object. Oh, interesting. Look, we can see the model and the jewel. The crown. Be delivered back. I don't think I need to go too far. I feel like it wouldn't make too much sense to be way too far away. Just for the sake of trying, let's pull this. The object we're looking for is a small one. Okay. I feel like, again, with a well-placed arrow, you could cut a cord. Saw it in a movie once. Hmm. Not quite seeing anything, so I'm just gonna see and just use the hint. It's been wedged into the wall behind the stage. What? Wall behind- oh my gosh. Okay, so I was on the right track. Okay, arrow. Got it. A bolt. Are you familiar with this ancient murder weapon? It was fired from a ranged weapon called the crossbow. The tech was very clever for its time. Let's rewind time and look for the one who shot the bolt. Okay, so I think I actually may have solved the case already. Uh, we shall see. So here's when they were enjoying the show. Um... We have to keep track of many notions. Done. I've installed a new tool. The case journal. Okay. Okay, and this just helps us keep, keep track of our notes, basically. Alright, so we know that there is someone... ...who has the crossbow here. Oz Bones. 
Um, he's a former member of the band. Officially, he left Blood Axles due to artistic differences, but there was a gossip about fights over royalties on record sales. Let's follow Oz to study his movements, okay? I wonder if I'll be able to do the time manipulation as the game progresses, since this is still tutorial, you know. Okie dokie, so where is the wonderful Wizard of Oz? We're in tick eight. And he's right here. Undressed. Let's jump forward. Okay. So we'll keep following our suspect. It would stand a reason that he's walking down this road. Perhaps he'll keep walking that way. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, because we've got a marching band coming through here. So I don't think he would go that way. Maybe Hap, he's trying to find a getaway vehicle or something. Oh, hold on, here he goes trying to disguise himself. He stole someone's hat. He's hidden in the marching band, which is crossing the street and no longer carrying the crossbow. Yep, this is suspicious. We find the crossbow, we can analyze it by comparing the grooves impressed on the bolt and those left on the crossbow drum. That way we can determine whether it's the murder weapon. We'll have to find where he hid the weapon. Okay. So it has to be somewhere in between this marching band area and where he was over here. I mean, I would just throw it, throw it into the bushes if I was him. Mm -mm. Not in this manhole. I don't know, again, I would have dumped it in a manhole or in a tree. But I don't see anything poking out and that's the weird thing. So I'm gonna use another hint. He hid it in a moving vehicle. What? I don't even see it. Okay, so if it, moving vehicle. Oh my gosh. Okay. Found it. Oh. Macro detail scanner subroutine loaded correctly. Let's compare the grooves impressed. Okay. Do we have our murder weapon? It's kind of scary. Ooh, macro details. Ah, okay, so we gotta match this stuff up. Oh, I see, match the white lines with the red. Okay. Looks like a match to me. <laughs> Thumbs up. Crossbow analyzed. The murder weapon, there's no doubt. Osbones is the culprit. However, detective, remember our goal isn't to arrest a criminal, but to restore the true timeline. In this case, it provides that Axel survives and Oz isn't charged with such a major crime. A partial deviation can be reabsorbed by the time stream, but a, a subsa substantial one cannot. Anyway, we take one problem at a time. We have to figure out every detail in this case before we act. Let's reconstruct Axel's day to find out why Oz wanted to kill him so blatantly. I don't know, it seems like maybe you go back further than a day. This seems like a more deep-seated desire, um, but then we can figure out how to prevent it. Okay, so let's go back a few more ticks. Okay, so now we are recreating the day. The show, as you can see, has not yet started. People are still setting up, gathering, doing the things that they do before a show starts. So we've got to find the band. Okay, so I think this is our band members. No, maybe not. I thought, where's the bunny? Oh, here we go. Is this you? There we go. Um, celebrity routine. Okay, so they were having a fan meet. And after the fan meet, Here's the marching band that got started. It looks like, I mean, I would suspect they'd be going to the concert after the fan meet. Okay, so it looks like then they went to the soda rooftop. Perhaps there's some paparazzi and it looks like they're sending messages. Um, he was 
particularly upset, probably writing to Oz. We have to get our hands on this phone, but we can only do it when Axel doesn't have it in hand. In fact, this is one of the precautions we'll have to take so we don't inadvertently interfere with the space-time flow. Okay. So now people have continued to move. Gotta find the band members. All right, got them. Got them. Okay, they're riding around town, rocking out. But the phone is in his hands, so we cannot use it. So we move forward one more bump. Um, let's see. So now they're getting ready to set up for the show. I see a couple of the band members sipping drinks. Um, this one's taking a selfie. Ah, is your phone behind you? You're getting ready, but here's your phone. Oh, there we go. Come on. Yes. Axel's phone. There it is. I'll connect to the operating system of that piece of technological antique so I can extract the information we need. All right, that's pretty cool. I really like, I like the sleuthingness. I like that we're getting teleported into the AI to, to solve little puzzles. Um, first, we'll need to unlock the phone, but we have to reproduce Axel's fingerprint. So now you know what we gotta do. We gotta match the picture. Oops. I feel like <laughs> I was rushing my clicks, but it's nice and easy. Just as we suspected, the rumors were right. Oz was kicked out of the band due to economic issues related to song copyrights. The last messages are full of threats. The threats are sent, he sent are an act of felony, and if we can link him to the messages, we can have him arrested for a crime less serious than murder. That should be enough to restore the true timeline. Okay, so we can extract the IP address and triangulate. Okay, spare you the technical technicalities. In simple terms, we can trace Oz's location. All right. So, let's do it. Er, nope, not it. Oh, found him. <gasps> Disposed of the phone. Okay, well, you can't be that far. To go back in time when the phone was still in his hands. Okay, so now I think it's this 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 angry angry fella right over here. Threatening. Bingo, Oz is walking and texting at the same time, which is more than one of the major causes of death, but that isn't our issue though. The important thing is he's using his phone. Now we can link him to the threats Axel received and alert the police who can arrest and charge him. That way, we'll prevent Axel's murder and simultaneously get Oz a lighter sentence than one for murder would be. All right, we solved our first case. We should celebrate. Solved in 20 minutes. Took a long time. <laughs> hey, wait, but what? I'm getting some weird interference in the flow of space time. It's as if something is distorted. We, we need to check on this. It could be a malfunction in my system, or it could be something worse. The distortions in the time flow seem related to Oz bones? Is this a coincidence? Well, coincidences are our worst enemy, and this has to be connected to the murder. Find Oz bones. Okay, over here. What is this? What is this demon lizard? Whispering sweet nothing into his ear? Intruder. Alert, alert. Have you seen it too? Are my sensors acting funny? There's a person next to him, an intruder who seems to come from, well, outside the time flow. I can't stabilize the image because it disappeared when my system tried to pull information from it. However, traces of his intervention remain in the time flow. Watch Oz carefully. The anger he feels isn't natural and it must have been caused by the intruder. These are all questions that we absolutely must answer. However, first, we have to file the case and go back to the main screen of my system. Then we can continue this discussion. Oh, and I'll get rid of this language pack. We won't have more time for jokes. Okay. <laughs> no comment on the 
jokes. <laughs> uh, I'm like, what jokes? <laughs> That was unsettling. I have no record of a similar entity in my database, so we're facing something completely new. I'm afraid this will be a long, complex mystery to solve, so let me install a little upgrade. Okay. Rage. Ooh, okay. I've added the details about the strange happenings surrounding the last case on the board. Can't grasp the nature of that mysterious figure, but at least we can have some understanding of what his powers are. I su suggest we call him Rage for the meantime. Okay. Oh, alert new nexus event detected. Okay, now an explanation is in order. Under normal circumstances, the true timeline is naturally resilient and can adjust itself if minor or rare changes occur. But if too many quantum alterations were to happen in a small time frame, well, history could break apart. Those concentrations of changes to the true timeline are called nexus events, and it's our duty to stabilize them before it's too late. We need to identify and revert any alteration made to the proper course of history, and we have to do it now. All right, well, here we go. It's time to uh, go into scenario number two. Two nexus events in my first 30 minutes. My goodness. The Nexus event in the Lost Age is becoming more unstable at an alarming rate. My temporal scanners couldn't detect the variations as they occurred, but only once the deed was done. This can mean only one thing. Whoever is attempting to disrupt the timeline is well aware of our presence and is trying to break the time continuum by flooding it with dozens of tiny, barely noticeable changes. These changes are like drops. One can make any difference, but if you get enough of them, you can create a C. Detective, I can see temporal fluctuations on the North Market Street. Something happened there. I do like this music. It's very cool. Okay, find out what happened. So a North Market Street. I mean, this is central. Oh, what happened here? We've got a big accident, looks like. Shattered. Shoshan. The stall was destroyed entirely as if an unstoppable force had run through it. The merchant appears to be desperate. Let me load my subroutine so we can see if there are any details about him in our database. Error. Access denied. Data about the subject Shoshan is classified. Crimson level clearance is required. Oh well, it's worth a try. At least we know his name now. Let's see if we can access the nature of this unstoppable force. Okay, so let's look for some more clues. Was it perhaps this ram? It's a goat! <laughs> there. A villain to be reckoned with. A destroyer of stalls. Uh, a goat? Why do there have to be goats? <laughs> There's no telling what horror such a creature could wreck upon a defenseless city. Well, I guess we have our unstoppable force. Sadly, goats of the Lost Age weren't legally punishable, but that thing only... That became a thing only after the great goat gorilla... That became only a thing... That became a thing only after the Great Goat Gorilla of 2356. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet in our timeline. Because we can't have that devious goat arrested, we should follow it until we find its owner. Okay. It's going back one tick. So let's zoom on out and see where it came from. Got some snakes. Oh, there it is. It's hiding behind that portal. Okay, looks like we'll have to go back a little bit. <laughs> nice horns. Oh, here we go. This right here. You're carrying your little buddy. Fool! That man is foolish enough to hold the goat in his arms. Is he its owner or is the goat really his master? Let's find his identity and hoping we have enough clearance this time. Okay. Oh, there we go. Match for the subroutine. All right, so let's see. Oh, geez. I'm not very good at this kind of timing. Oh, shoot. Nope. Oh, start over from the beginning. Dang it. Hmm. 
There we go. Ufa Merchant. Okay. Our goat's owner name is Ufa, some sort of merchant he is. I can see from the database that he had a bitter rivalry with Shoshan. Wait, I have an idea. I want to see what Ufa was doing while his goat from hell was raising Shoshan's station stall. Oh, was he like laughing? I think I remember seeing him laughing or being kind of happy about it. If I remember correctly. Maybe not. I thought it was a previous image that I saw, maybe. Oh, there he is. Yes, I did see that. Look at him. He seems to be pretty happy. I guess he and the goat share an appetite for destruction. Everything about Ufa is suspicious. Let's go back in time and follow him so we can confirm. Yes, and I do remember seeing Ufa at the end of the street, uh, the market street, smiling as presumably he let go of the goat. Oh, I think it went back way, back way further, though. Oh, that's just the goat. Where's Ufa? Okay, here we go. Got you making maybe a sordid deal. Ufa was arguing with Shosan. Oh, okay, they were arguing. Okay. They had an ongoing challenge. It was called capitalism. <laughs> it's quite popular between merchants of the last age. Oh, Lord. Basically, the challengers would see who could make the more significant profit within a certain time period. Back then, it was just a game. Too bad it evolved into something quite dreadful. Well, enough with the history lesson. Let's follow Ufa during the game so we can see how well he plays. Um, <laughs> it's a funny little tidbit, but more funny would be if they showed how... Okay. So now what I want to do is find out where and when he picked up the goat. Okay, here we go. Here's Oof. Oh no, that's not Oofda. That's our... Wait, yeah it is. This is Oofda. No? Let's, let's take a look at a hint. Whoops. Oofa. Okay, uh, that was weird. I just kept clicking on it and eventually it registered. Um, so I was like, that is, that is Ufa. Okay, so now we're gonna keep moving forward. So failure, so Ufa did not successfully sell things to that mouse. Looks like Ufa's not selling successfully to this mouse either. Failure, failure, failure. So instead of being a good loser decided to be a sore winner it looks like okay so here's the goat but that's not Ufa oh here we go Ufa was getting laughed at by Shoshan. Um, and Shoshan is mocking him as is his right. Usually those challenges include a wager of some kind. I believe we should decipher the stone tablet so we can learn the full rules of capitalism. Okay. All right, decipher the stone tablet. Oof, okay, so we've got sequence one. Oh god. Oh, oh, I see, okay. I see, I see, I see. So we have one, two, three. Cool, I do like that. That's kind of a fun puzzle. Um, I just want this one. Ooh. Ooh. 
Dang it. Hold on. Backtrack, backtrack. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. I like these little deciphering segments that we get. Um, I hope they get more complex. I think that would be really cool. I know this is the demo, um, so I'd be interested to know how much more they'll progress in complexity, because if this gets more complex, I would be super interested in that. Um, uh, the loser will have to give his stall to the winner. Ufa has just lost everything. I must admit, he seems like a nice guy despite his love for goats. <laughs> and he doesn't deserve such a fate. No one does. Capitalism is a broken game that nobody should have to play. There's just that. Uh, but not in this ruthless age. Even so, he never had a chance or the courage to seek revenge on Shoshan in the true timeline. It often happens that way. Ah, uh, so did we get another one of those mysterious rage figures invading this timeline? Okay, undo this paradox. I sense you're becoming stressed about finding someone in a city where our suspect can instantly travel between Earth gates. Maybe I can help. Just give me some time to install the new subroutine. You'll have a freemium subscription so you can speed up some process by watching some ads. If this is my job, why am I watching ads to do my job? What kind of dystopic future are we in? <laughs> More questions are coming up than answers. No? Okay then. Are you really sure about the ads? They're quite funny and targeted just for you. I know what you like. No! Okay, you said no, I get it. <laughs> Do you really, though? Installation complete. All right, here we go. Do, mi, fa, la, so. Uh, you know some objects called pivots vibrate at a particular frequency depending on the moment of time they're observed. Studying these objects makes it possible to represent a period with a melody. However, by touching these pivotal objects, it's possible to get an indication of the proximity of distortion. Okay. Ice means far, fire means near. Okay, warm or hot, well, warm or cold. Ray, perfect. As you saw, this element returns fire, which means Ufa is nearby. Let's follow the merchant until we find the origin of the paradox. Okay, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Me is fire. Soul is cold. Sea is cold. Cold. Law is fire. Law is fire. Ray is cold. Doe is cold. Okay, so somewhere in this region is what I'm guessing. Oh, is that, is that him? Maybe not. Oh, there you go. Oh my gosh, you were right there in front of me and I didn't I didn't catch you. Shambles. Okay, we're getting closer. About halfway there. So now we see Ah, Rage is back there too. Detective, can you see it too? That's the entity we call Rage. So it was his intervention that turned Ufa's frustration into a fit of anger strong enough to push him towards vengeance. As I suspected, our foes are attacking the timeline by orchestrating several minor changes. We can't let this happen. We know what Rage's powers are, and Ufa is in the throes of an uncontrollable fury because of him. We need to find a ticking time when Ulfa is committing Ufa. Keep wanting to put an L in there or a T. Ufa is committing a crime so we can have him arrested. All right, Ufa. Time to find the crime. So, looks like, aha, here we go. Ufa is, are you stealing the goat? Okay, that's probably gonna be a lesser crime than destroying someone's stall. There, fantastic work, detective. It seems that our goat owner was a goat thief. Ufa stole the goat from this pet shop and unleashed its hellbound rage on Shoshan's stall. I know it's fun, but we can't let it happen. The timeline is at risk. Because we've just seen Ufa steal a goat, we can alert a guard and have him detained for rustling. That way, Shoshana's stall and fortune will be safe. I'm sorry, detective, but the right thing to do isn't always the easiest one. Hmm. Okay. 
Now we must return to the mainframe and collect more data on our foes. Thanks. Wishlist now. I'm really, really curious about this game because from a mechanical standpoint, let's see what happens if we hit continue. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there's more to this demo. Whole new adventure is waiting for you in the, oh, in the full game version. You can replay these cases using the map icons as much as you want. Perfect. Yeah, I think mechanically, I think this game is really interesting. I love the, um, I forget what it's called. It's almost like a Where's Waldo, right? We're searching for details in a big picture with a lot happening. I think that's really fun. Um, the black and white in some ways is really nice, um, but in some ways it makes it after a couple of cases, I can see how maybe I would find it really difficult to see and find my eyes straining a little bit. Um, but I think the the thick strokes of the line art make it make it okay. The biggest question to me is if any of the narrative is going to pick up what I felt like it was putting down a little bit in terms of discussing AI surveillance, messing with timelines, um, and the nature of going in and preventing crimes or putting people in jail for crimes that they did to prevent other crimes. Like, that part to me, I feel like I wish I knew more about what they were hoping to do. And perhaps it's on their Steam page. Actually, let's take a quick second. Maybe on their Steam page, they'll they'll say something. Um, okay, so in this Steam page, actually here, let me show you all. Okay, so here's the Steam page. You can see this is sort of the bulk of the features. Uh, you can see there's a little bit more about the map and someone's trying to disturb time, but it says you'll explore five different ages, Steam Age, Atlantean Age, Information Age, Lost Age, and Aeon Age. Um, it seems like maybe this will be more surface level than I thought. Uh, more of a just straightforward puzzle detective analysis looking game uh, than anything else. I would be very curious. I would be very curious to see what happens with the narrative here, because I think it could go some really interesting places if it took that direction. But as a straightforward puzzle game, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, if you enjoy games like, or at least experiences like Where Waldo, finding clues, really methodically going through images, that, that I think this may be up your alley. I would love to know also if we can control moving back and forth through the ticks of time. I think not being able to control it made me feel a little bit like I was just along for the ride um, versus helping control the investigation. So I think this is interesting enough that I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I probably will wait and see, especially with so many other puzzle games coming out. But I do think that for the people who enjoy this, this may be right up their alley. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I'm curious how you felt as we were playing. Um, would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you would like to just have more thoughtful discussions and discover more indie games, my hope is to help you find your next favorite title. So be sure to follow me here on YouTube as well as on TikTok and Twitch, where I cover all sorts of games, primarily indies, but you know, every once in a while, a girl's gotta branch out. And uh, be sure to join Geeks and Grounds uh, at geeksandgrounds.com. It's a month monthly game club where you get a weekly newsletter helping you play through and discuss games as a community. And the whole goal is to connect games to your experiences, to learn about yourself through the games we play, and to connect with other people who are doing the same. So yeah, hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time in the cafe. Bye!